Well, blessed greetings, YouTube Massive. Good to be back again. We're taking a look today at Rubber Drum 2 from Westfinger. Let's take a listen and we'll be back to walk through the plugin. Right. That's the basic sound of some of the sounds. I say some of the sounds because we have uh, five kicks, five side sticks, five snares, two hi-hats, and two timbales that we can choose from uh, to put together a kit here. Um, so let's take a quick, well, might not be so quick, but let's take a rundown of the plugin and give you the basics here. If you see all these white boxes with numbers in them, these are to select your output for the channel. So once you activate an output in your DAW or your DAW, then you can choose what channel it's going to. So I have the kick going to one, side stick is on two, the snares are on two. Uh, basically for this demo, I have uh, anything I want, no reverb on is going out one. Stuff with reverb on it is going out channel two. Then the piano room is going out three. The bleed is going out channel four. Just so we can solo those and you can hear what they sound like on their own and how they add to the sound of the kit overall, okay? Um, so you can obviously send multiple sounds to one output. Um, the outputs are in stereo, so you can uh, control the pan with this control right here. So we could pan out the toms if we wanted to when they hit and uh you know they would go from left to right let's take a quick listen at the big intro tom roll here all right so you should have been able to hear the panning there and um let's just set up the roto tom so these are hitting towards the end oh. Let's keep that one there, bring the high tom over a bit. Okay, so let's do a, a rundown here. On the top level, we have this piano room controls. So these knobs are controlling the level of the piano room sound. And uh, what Seb has done here with this, he's put a microphone inside a piano and captured the sounds when he was sampling them. Okay, um, below that, we have the bleed. So that is, that is the mics from the other drums picking up, you know, a sound. So the kick will come out the snare and the toms. And the toms will bleed into the hi-hat mics and, and the uh, snare mics, etc. So you can control for each sound how much of it you want in the piano room, how much in the bleed. All right. So this lets you fine-tune the overall sound quite a bit. And uh, it does add a nice bit to the kit. And we will get into that shortly. The pan was al has already been mentioned. is sitting here. And um, the outputs are all stereo. So you can send to a single output and still use the pan controls right on the plug-in here. Then we have a tune, which we didn't have in Rubber Drum 1. It was a master tune. It affected the whole kit. But we have a tune per sound here, which is really handy, of course. And uh, we have the selectors or the mute buttons. If there's only a single sound available, it's a mute, you're on or off. The selectors choose which sound you're playing. If I wanted to mute the kick, I just don't select any of the sounds out of the five kicks. Okay? So we have five kicks, five rim shots, five snares, two hi-hats, one set of toms, two timbales, two cymbals that are separate. You're not selecting one or the other. You can use both. And high, mid, low roto toms, which is also a new addition to this kit. The toms are new toms recorded for this, not the same sounds as on Rubber Drum 1. So if you have both kits, you can mix and match the sounds to uh, build your kit the way that you want for your productions, okay? Uh, works out really good. These toms are a little more gritty, uh, still nice, muffled kind of toms. So you got a, a great sound and a great combination in... Uh, working with the first version or this and being able to use the rototoms as well as being able to tune them. 
So uh, it adds quite a lot to expanding your drum sounds for this, uh, for sure. And uh, makes the kit a lot more usable on different styles uh, besides just reggae, of course. Over here to the right, we have Simmons drum samples. So these trigger along with the main sounds. Okay, right now they're turned off. But if I turn it on and press the kick, I'm going to turn the volume down a bit because it's kind of loud. If I turn it on and play the kick, it will layer with this kick here. Okay. So there's that as well. So the kick triggers with the kick, snare triggers with the snare, the toms trigger with the toms, but they also have their own triggers a couple octaves up. So if you're using uh, e-drums to trigger this, you can set it up however you like. You can have, if you have a lot of pads, you can have the Simmons drums set up to trigger on different notes. Or you can just mute the kick if you're using a Simmons kick, let's say, or a Simmons snare or the Simmons toms. You just mute these toms and the Simmons toms will come out of your uh, your regular setup once you have the notes assigned for the, for the uh, acoustic toms here. Okay. Um, if these are off, the sounds will still trigger from their own keys. Let's just take a listen to that. So right now they're off. I'm going to play... Um, just the triggers for the Simmons drums, and you're going to still hear the sounds. All right. I'm going to uh, just mute the reverb for now. I'm going to mute the bleed and piano room because we're going to just play through the sounds clean after we finish talking about this. So the on and off works for if you are using... Uh, the main triggers, same kick trigger, same snare trigger, then having it off means the snare won't come through when you trigger the acoustic snare. Okay, again, you have your own outputs for these, of course. Below this, you have a velocity section here, which allows you to customize it if you are using e-drums to how heavy or soft you play, because uh, everybody has a different touch. So if you play softer, you can turn the minimum up and uh, if you play real hard, you might want to turn the maximum down a bit to fine tune it. There is a normal weak strong setting here. Uh, you can also use that with your program velocities. Like I, I don't use e-drums. I program in my velocities. You can still adjust it with this if you want to fine tune the way. If you find that there's too much variation between the loud and the soft hits, you can just turn the minimum up a bit and you can that just lets the minimum be a higher level than what you had in already so it reduces you know the um the dynamics a bit on that that's why he's called it a midi compressor basically next to that we have the layer effects now there is this one is not really a layer sound the cuica has its own uh trigger sounds like this <laughs> And this layer snare, this is a filtered noise with a sweep on it, like an LFO is um, just sweeping it up and down. You have a decay, tune, and gain for each of these. One of the snare hits, the E note, triggers this noise along with it, the snare layer, okay? So on the, holder, the longer you hold down the note is the longer the noise will stay on for. Uh, so let's just take a listen to that. Okay, it's a pretty common thing used in reggae. I'm sure you've heard it a lot on a lot of uh, songs from the early mid 80s there. Um, the nice thing with it is it's not the exact same sound. It's not just a single sample playing. Uh, it hits, that LFO is like free running. So every time you hit it, it's in a slightly different place of the sweep. So that's cool. Um, to have it would have been nice if you could control the speed of that but i'm not sure how he set it up i'm not sure if it's a looping sample playing or if he actually has an oscillator in there with a filter on it but regardless it's a nice touch to have built into the drum machine 
if it's something that you're not sure how to set up in a standalone synth somehow. Um, so let's just play through the drum loop. Uh, I'm going to leave the piano room, the bleeds off, as I mentioned earlier, the reverb off. And I'm going to just uh, play through the different sounds, the kicks, the snares. We'll change the hi-hat. We'll change the timbali, okay? Timbali one you'll hear is, is a, a bit sort of uh, gritty, a little more distorted sound on it. Timbali two is a clean sound, a little higher tuned. Of course, you can control the tuning still. And uh, let's take a listen now. Okay, those are the acoustic sounds. You can mix and match them, um, meaning you can put on all five snares and have them all play together if you want. But you only have the one set of volumes for them. You have a top mic and a bottom mic. You can't control the levels of the individual sounds themselves. They're either on or off. Okay, so it's only the velocity, but the velocity is going to control all the sounds that are on at the same time if you have on two, three snares. But you can match them together if you want. You can have more than one on. Um, definitely nothing wrong with doing that. Same thing with the kicks, the side sticks. You can play both hi-hats together, both timbales together. Okay. Um, let's take a quick listen to the Simmons sounds. So you know what? Let's turn these off. We'll leave the hi-hat timbali on. Uh, turn off the toms. We'll leave the roto toms on because they trigger on their on different notes. And we'll take a listen to how the Simmons samples sound here. So there's that. Sorry about that. I didn't have them turned on at the beginning. No problem. Uh, what else do we want to run through here? Uh, let's check out the piano room alone and see what it sounds like. Okay, let's unmute it. So these are the drums going just through the piano room. Then we'll check out the bleed channel and then we'll mix them in together. Uh, let's turn the volume up on it a bit. It helps if I have sound selected, of course. Uh, let's try kick four. channels now.
Okay, let's turn down the bleed and the piano room and we'll bring them up as the sound is playing. Going to turn on the reverb again. And here we go. Okay, let's just mute them and uh, while it's playing I'll unmute them, mute them again just so you can hear the difference of them mixed in a bit. It adds a, a little bit of fullness to the uh, drum kit overall. Also a slight bit on the stereo field of it. Let's uh, take a listen. Okay, so it is a very noticeable difference there, should be, anyways, hopefully you're listening on some decent monitors or some good headphones. Um, of course, you can turn those up louder. Keep in mind, none of these sounds are processed here. I'm not adding any EQ or reverb, uh, sorry, I have reverb, but no EQ or compression on them. Okay, so these are just the sounds as they're recorded. You're going to enhance them, I'm going to enhance them with some processing uh, when we are using them in a song, of course. But I just wanted you to hear the raw sounds and how the kit uh, works, sounds with the bass line and piano that I have going here. Um, so the bleed in the room is actually uh, the piano room, and the bleed is really nice to have uh, added into your sound here. Of course, if you're mixing sounds from an, uh, sampled sounds you have or from another software or even from Rubber Drum 1, you're not going to get the same sound. But if you're using your full kit out of this piece of software, um, it's definitely a nice handy feature to have built in. Once you EQ those, I mean, you can clean up the piano room a bit and you can control, as you hear, the toms are a bit heavy coming out. You know, you can turn down the level of the toms a bit get the sounds balanced uh, within the piano room and the bleed the way you want them to be, and then mix it in. All right, let's listen some more uh, with a bass line and the piano playing, and we'll just uh, go through some of the sound selections again for you to hear an overall um, take on the different sounds included here. Let's go. So that is Rubber Drum 2. Last thing I want to point out is some of the multiple hits. So let's just listen to the timbali. I believe there's uh, five different hits on the timbali. There's like a pre-roll and then a, a kind of a roll. Of, I think what they call a drag is where um, it hits and just gets a little softer. And um, same thing with the snare. You have a pre-roll, you have a drag sound and the main hit. Um, it's handy to have the hi-hats. There's kind of two different accents and the main hi-hat sound plus the open hi-hat. So 
Um, it's not just the velocity making the hi-hat sound differently as we play along. I'm, I'm using a different hit on some of those. So let's take a listen to that. Um, let's check the timbali out first. So that's the pre-roll and the drag sound. So if you listen, the first one is the pre-roll and the drag, it just, uh, the hits get softer as, uh, as the sound plays on. So there's six hits there um, as there's a flam hit as well. And let's listen to the snare variations now. So same thing there. You have a flam uh, along with the pre-roll and the uh, drag sound and then a regular snare hit. And um, no, uh, the difference with the timbala, you have an extra hit because you're, you're able to hit, uh, it has like a rim and edge shot. Uh, so he plays closer to the rim as well as on the center and as well as kind of midway through about. So you get three different just straight hits on that. Um, I guess that's about it for the plugin, really. You know what, it's, uh, it's a great piece of software out here. Um, let's support our developers who produce products you know specifically for reggae use you know uh, to get the sounds you want sometimes can be quite difficult you know you can spend a lot of time going through samples and you still end up using something that is not giving you the sound that you want uh, this has a real nice vintage sound uh, the, the snares are snares that i've heard the sound of those in many many reggae recordings all right uh, so it's Westfinger. Uh, the description will be, uh, or the, the description will have a link to the site where you can check the plugin out, download a demo if you want, or purchase. All right, and thanks for checking out the video. Bless up. How you mean?